Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is five-time All-Star, World Series MVP, a member of the No-Hitter Club, and a former BYU baseball great, Jack Morris. Jack, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Good morning, guys. You will be the keynote speaker at BYU Baseball's third annual First Pitch Fundraising Dinner and Auction on January 8th. How did you initially get involved with that and Mike Littlewood in the program now? Well, it's kind of a, a elongated story, but I got a, a very good friend who is an NCAA basketball referee, and he knew Mike uh, from his previous uh, um, activities. And uh, when when the whole uh, transition to hire a new baseball coach came about, uh, he asked me to call the athletic director uh, and put in a good word for Mike on his behalf and you know for no other reason than i trust my friend and his judgment i did just that and uh you know i i don't know if i had any input or not but at least i expressed my opinion and uh, mike was hired and uh, from there uh, i guess it's just a matter of us getting to know each other a little bit better uh he's asked me to come out and speak to this uh, banquet well, I think it's great. There have been a lot of uh, notable uh, alumni in the majors uh, from the past, hopefully more here in the future. But I think it's, it'll be great to have you involved uh, with BYU Baseball. What did BYU Baseball mean to you in your career, Jack? Well, it's certainly an integral part of uh, my journey through the, the crazy world of baseball. Uh, I, I was a high school kid here in Minnesota and uh, really pursued, in my mind anyway, a professional career. And I wanted to figure out what the best step for me was. All the years that I grew up in Minnesota, I kind of was thinking that I'd go to the University of Minnesota and, and play baseball there. But uh, I realized by the time I was a senior, and we're talking way back in the 70s now, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of kids getting signed out of Minnesota. The the, the program that they had uh, was very limited in their exposure. They had one road trip to Texas, and uh, the Big Ten at the time was – cold and there was snow on the ground and all sorts of things <laughs> and uh, you know I, I started exploring schools that might have a little bit better opportunity for me if I could excel to get exposed and BYU certainly was a great fit I had a sister and cousins that went to BYU and the idea of snow skiing even though it was against the rules for us at in baseball I, I figured well you got to break a few rules in life and I wanted to go snow skiing so I, <laughs> I visited I visited campus fell in love with it and uh, I couldn't have really asked for a better experience in college than what I had at BYU and you snow skied while at BYU that's what it sounds like Jack uh, yes, I did. I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not? You can't avoid it forever. <laughs> exactly. That's why I went there. That's why the mountains are there, right? <laughs> it's, it's been a while. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Jack Morris <laughs> with us on BYU Sports Nation, former BYU baseball pitching great World Series MVP. He's going to speak to BYU baseball during the first pitch fundraising dinner. Okay, Jack. I had a technical director when I worked at my first television station in Grand Junction, Colorado. His name was Kimbo. He was the hugest Tigers fan, and any time I mentioned BYU, he would walk me through every single pitch on April 7th, 1984, when he witnessed you throw a no-hitter as he was ditching school. How often do you get asked about that no-hit performance? Well, in all honesty, not very often. I mean, that was a long time ago, so it's just kind of nice. I, I need to give the guy a hug uh, because anybody that can re go back that far and remember such nonsense is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, it was a great day for me personally. It uh, kind of a magical day. I think you have to have a lot of things going your way to be fortunate enough to throw such a thing. And uh, I had great defense, a great bunch of guys that played behind me. And you know, I don't know. I don't know as though I could ever uh, say why it happened. Uh, you know, I threw a couple one hitters in my career, and I was very close to a perfect game once. But uh, the magic happened uh, back in April and, uh, of 1984. I went to one major league game this year, and it happened to be a no-hitter. Hisashi Iwakuma's uh, no-hitter with the Seattle Mariners, so that was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I watched a game against Seattle that he, Iokuma pitched, and he didn't have a no-hitter, but he could have because his stuff was that good that day, and that was only a couple of weeks before he threw the no-hitter. Now tell us about uh, one of the unique pitches that you had was the fork ball, uh, which isn't used a ton. Can you tell us, uh, inform people about what the fork ball is and how you mastered that? Well, I, I I was in the middle of my major league career uh, with the Tigers, and I kind of was losing the effectiveness of my slider. 
and uh, had a teammate who pitched with Bruce Suter. Uh, Milt Wilcox was his name, and he used to pitch with the Cubs and had Suter as a teammate. And Suter showed him how he threw his fork ball, and Milt uh, tried to help me in between uh, starts one time in the bullpen. He said, why don't you try this? Just play with it a little bit and see what happens. Well, I threw about 20 pitches, and not a thing happened. Every one slipped out of my fingers, and nothing worked right. And I said, well, that's a waste of time. <laughs> and he says, ah, put your thumb on the side and try it again. You know, I threw about four more, and nothing happened. I was ready to quit. I threw one more, and all of a sudden, magic happened. The ball just exploded straight down. It looked like the ultimate cheat pitch, and... I figured, all right, I've got something special here. I've got to figure this out because there's nobody on this planet that's going to be able to hit it. And quite honestly, for about a year in the big leagues, that was the truth. If I could throw it anywhere close to the strike zone, it was almost like a free gift. Can you still throw the fork ball? I cannot. Uh, I, I basically, after over a decade of throwing in the big leagues, uh, it does put a ton of stress on your elbow. And that's why most pitching coaches don't teach it to you majority of the players in the big leagues now is because it does put stress and eventually uh, I tore a ligament there. I probably needed Tommy John surgery, but was still able to throw the rest of my pitches without surgery. So I pitched my final year with Cleveland without throwing the fork ball anymore. What was it like this past year to be uh, one of the analysts with Kirk Gibson uh, with the Tigers on TV? Well, I actually don't didn't work with Kirk. Kirk and I actually do the same job, so we switched roles. Uh, you know, he alternated when I wasn't there, and uh, Rod Allen is their full-time guy. And, uh, you know, Gibby and I were, were teammates in Detroit during a great run in 84 and beyond. Uh, you know, he's, he's one of the most intense guys I've ever known, and uh, certainly has a passion for the game. He's managed, uh, you know, he's fighting a, a very tough thing right now in Parkinson's disease, but Kirk's a battler, and he's going he's gonna to continue to do everything he can to stay active and live a, a full life. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. There are some BYU ties currently on that Detroit Tigers coaching roster. Wally Joyner is a hitting coach, is he not? Wally is, and it's funny because uh, when Wally got hired by the Tigers, which to me was quite odd. I mean, you, you just can't have a guy that never played for Detroit be one of their coaches, but it's the way it is in the, in the game of baseball. And so I, I looked up the numbers that Wally had off me, and, and lo and behold, I think Wally Joyner hit me better than any player in my entire career. I think no he ended kidding. up like mm. hitting something like 429. So how embarrassing is it <laughs> that I, as the announcer, have to go up and say, hey, Wally, welcome to Detroit. By the way, uh, you hit me better than anybody else I ever faced in my life. <laughs> and he laughed, and he says, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the BYU discount there? Come on, Wally. Yeah, yeah. well, Jeez. I guess we were never teammates, so he didn't realize yeah. there was supposed to be respect. So, so in the 70s and 80s, BYU was able to produce these these names in the major leagues that people know. You know, you and Wally, Corey Snyder, Ricky Aguilera, these guys. Well, uh, what will it, what would it take maybe nowadays to try and get back to that for BYU baseball in an era where uh, you know they have an indoor practice facility? So you didn't back in the day. I don't even know what you guys did. Well. You know, I think it's so much about recruiting and getting the right kids. Uh, you know, baseball is a tough, tough game, and it's become an international game. There's more more and more Latins and now Asians coming into the game, and, and that's great. It's wonderful. But I I still have to, you know, because of my roots, I have to pull for the, the guys that are playing the game right here in the U.S., and I think kids just need to understand that, in order to make it, you've got to have, number one, a tremendous amount of passion dedicated to your sport. You've got to repeat your skill over and over and over to get any better. And if you're willing to do that, you never know what can happen. But, uh, you know, it really does take uh, the right kid and the right environment. And I, I guess I was really blessed to be a part of BYU because at the time they played a, a very, very uh, – Good schedule. Uh, I was exposed to a lot of great baseball teams in college level. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, it just kept blossoming through my college uh, time into the minor leagues and then into the big leagues. Five-time All-Star World Series MVP and former BYU baseball pitching great Jack Morris with us on the show. Uh, we'll end with this. Who had the better pro baseball mustache, you or Raleigh Fingers? <laughs> well, Raleigh did because – he was the only guy with a handlebar, <laughs> well, except for, like, way back in the 1800s. <laughs> Fair enough. Jack, it's been great to have you on the program. You can find out more about the BYU Baseball First Pitch Dinner featuring Jack Morris on the BYU Baseball page at BYUcougars.com. Have a great day, Jack. Thanks for the time. Yeah, thank you, guys. Have a good day.